It's one big fire. A bit more water. It's out. Oh, shit. Are you ready for an outrageous Outback compilation with the Joneses? There you go. If someone goes missing, you've got to be straight out there looking for them, you know? You'd lost and perish in this country quick. As long as your butt crack's not going to hang out. It's been, what, 26 years since I've rode in a race. <laughs> Sharks usually grab it straight away. If he's in there, we'll get him. I don't want anything to happen to him. At number five. Back at the ranch. It's too hot out here for me. Nobody's looking forward to a day off as much as Milton. Hang on a sec. What do you heard? What's happened? But one phone call is about to change everything. Keep us informed, eh? Right up. What She's finished then. What happened? Milton's had word that one of his men on the ground crew didn't get back home from yesterday's muster. Dave didn't get back until late last night. He reckoned Dooley hadn't turned up. Yeah, we got a call that he wasn't there. They keep an eye on him at the radio. See, if he's not home every night, they let me know. 75-year-old Jim Dooley is Milton's oldest cowboy, and he was last seen in his ute doing maintenance work. Hey, copy there, Dooley. Hey, copy that, Dooley. He's starting to get a bit frightened, and actually, his, his old memory's going, eh? You always think the worst, day eh, when you can't get them on the radio. I'll get up high old Dooley. He's got a two-way in his motor car. So I'll get up about 3,000 feet and give him a call, and I should be able to pick him up find out where he's at. Yeah, right, yeah. I don't see it. Someone goes missing at Coolibar, it's everyone's business. Just having a look at the dam and he's not there, so we'd better go for a look a bit further down. Very much. Pilot Stephen and Mick are joining the search. You'll be able to come out this way, Mick. Down that creek, down that creek, eh? If someone goes missing, you've got to be straight out there looking for them, you know? Pretty hard sort of country at the end of the year. You'd lost and perish in this country quick. Just things go pear shaped quick when you get lost out here. We're going to go up to the beach and then come back this way, OK? Retrace his footsteps a bit, see where he might be. You know, you've got to be here somewhere. In the skies above Coolibar, the search continues for Milton's missing mate, Jim Dooley. Hey, copy there, Dooley. Milton and his two best pilots are combing the rugged country for any signs of the 75-year-old. Jim Dooley, do you receive? The day's heating up, and still no sign of Dooley or his you. Oh, I just checked this out, eh? But finally, a breakthrough. Without me left door now, eh? Well, that looks like Dooley's you. Woo! I'll see if there's any signs of life down there. Yeah, you on channel there, Jim. Hello, Jim. You hear us there, mate? He's not talking on the radio. He might have a flat battery or something. Hopefully that's all it is. He's not moving, so I'll have to land here and make sure he's all right. Hopefully nothing serious has happened here. Might be just broken down, hopefully. Yeah, good day, it's Mick. Hey, I found Jim. He's got a broken drive back when he's rear in. Yeah, he's all right, everything's good. He just said he, he didn't want to lift anyway because he was worried that he's not going to pull his gear out of his car. Righto, see ya.
Do you get your, you get the biggest hole in your pants. They're all the time. <laughs> yep, I'll get it sorted. 30 k's south of the homestead, Cooley Bar's mechanic Dave is on his way to fetch Dooley. I reckon he might be very, he lives on iced coffee, so I've got him on there, that'll keep him going for a while. Dooley spent a night and morning sticking by his broken down ute. So Dave is a sight for sore eyes. See, you're a wild looking man, aren't you? Hey, you got your breakfast and all. Spoiled or what? Oh, I'm too tired to get out of here, right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and what are you done to her, old fella? Doesn't take Dave long to work out what's wrong. The wheelbarrow, I think. We can't really tow it home. It's going to have to go on a truck. That's all we can do with him, mate. Right from there, we can hide it early. We'll pull all that gear out. Yeah, you just keep an eye out for each other. You've got to, if you're going to survive, you've got to keep an eye out for each other. For Dooley, it's been a long day. Take you home to bed, eh? You don't expect me to tuck you in either. I slept last night. In a tangled sort of a way. It's like an old home in Pigeon Hill. It might take him a while, but he'll always find his way home. Oh, you're all safe. That's the main thing, Dooley. He's pretty tough, old Dooley. <laughs> He'll be right. He's right. He always carries a blanket and pillow on his motor car. <laughs> Number four. Are you excited about having time off? Yeah. 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 Definitely. And get to go to the big city. <laughs> the big city. The big city. Clothing, first up. This would be my favourite shop in the whole town. North of the station, Rainey's helping Jeff sort out his own serious problem. Yeah, sure. Flashing everyone at work. The ladies will know what size you are. 34. That's because you wear your pants down around your ass. <sighs> <laughs> I chucked in an extra hole in my belt just so they'd pull up a bit more, but it doesn't seem to be working too well. You done yet? I'm chucking on some jeans. Jeff decided to bite the bullet. The low-slung jeans and the city gear are gone. <laughs> Show me how high they are. Lift your shirt up. Yeah. As long as your butt crack's not going to hang out. From the looks of things, he's going to need all the help he can get. You know that there's a rule, never trust a bloke in a black hat? That's better. That's like 100% better than when you walked in here. You reckon? Yes, definitely. <laughs> What's with the bird noises <laughs> and arm action? <sighs> it's a bit of a change up from boarding in a singlet, huh? Wearing out. Oh, look at this. You want to take it back, have you? Look. Cheers, mate. What have we got here? <laughs> it looks like a real cowboy now. Turn around and give us a look at you. There you go, good pair of, oh, good jeans too, eh? All decked out. That's the go, mate. Milton seems to like it, I guess. Trev doesn't like it, which is even better because I like it that much more now. So, it's good. Number three. Oh, he's warm. Bloody warm. I hate running. <laughs> I hate it. Now that he's fed the troops, Trev's on another mission, and he's asked Milton's sister-in-law, Christy, to help him. Trevor is supposed to be riding racehorse at the races this year. You've got to be doing something, otherwise you'll just go stupid. <laughs> so Trevor's decided at age 60 to make a comeback as an amateur jockey. Whew. It's been what? 26 years since I've rode in a race. He's done a fair bit with horse racing and I know he likes to have a punt. <laughs> but his boss, Milton, isn't ready to back him yet. I see him bobbing along, didn't know what the hell it was. He hadn't got a lot of pace about him, he's pretty steady. Trevor has to lose 10 kilos and he's got a tip they don't teach you at Weight Watchers. I use a black plastic bag all over the top of me. So I sweat like old jockey's trick me. It just makes you lose a lot of weight. Bloody body fluid, because that's most of the content of your body is liquid anyway. 
he's only got about two months for the races, so he's got a bit of work to do. It'll be quite exciting to watch. <laughs> this is day one of the regime of getting on the horse. So we'll see what happens. Trevor the Cook's in training for his return to racing. Piss off. The horse is a champion thoroughbred. Ah. Trouble is, he hasn't been ridden for about a year. Yeah. <laughs> this is when we try to get on his back and see how good he is. Let's be honest, the real trouble is that Trev hasn't raced in 25 years. <laughs> I was just trying to lie on his back. <laughs> It's more guts than glory at this stage, but if Trevor thinks he's got the inside running, he's in for a shock. There you go, they got the head down now. This is Milton's sister, Terry. <laughs> That's a rail rider! <laughs> she can ride as well as any coolie bar cowboy. Look out! And she's come to the station to take on one bloke. Trevor and I are competing against each other in a race, and he's lost so much weight. So I'm going to sabotage him when I go over. I'm going to put everything in his coffee or whatever I can. <laughs> I'll make him a fat little bastard. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing like a little rivalry. Skinny lunch today, Trev? No, it's a fat one for you. <laughs> Skinny one for me, but a fat one for you. <laughs> You'd have to buy me a beer after the race. you have to buy kick me your one. Ass. I'm just going to kick your ass. <laughs> little Milton spots something interesting. A flying cook. Goodness, he's got some pace. Go, Trevor. Make sure you yell out. Go! Got the horse. I've got to try and get him as fit as I can. Because I've only got about three weeks. After weeks of training, Trev, the cook's finally hitting his straps and he's come back as a jockey. He's got half a chance, yeah. Because he's been in training and hasn't been having any beer. Hopefully it's a good horse and he doesn't end up killing himself. That's all I worry about. Yeah, it's 26 years since I rode in a race. It'll be nice to do again. With race day coming up, he's looking more and more like a winner. But try telling that to his 60-year-old body. As you're older and it takes longer to come, to, come to come good again. And believe me, I'm not coming good at the moment. <laughs> I'm as sore as a boil. Rick and Mortis has sent in about four times, so... I am absolutely stuffed. Poor old Trev. He'll feel even worse when he finds out his competition is on top of her game. Have a good sleep, hey? We've been training now since the beginning of March. I think Trevor hasn't had as much time with his horse. Poor old mama. Terry is Milton Jones's sister. She signed up for the same race as Trev next week. And she's in it to win it. Trevor is my arch rival. <laughs> I'm going to kick your butt, Trev. <laughs> I'm trying to get the horses fitter and um, getting myself toned down. And Trev, you know, he's got to lose a few more kilos so he doesn't ride overweight. And <laughs> Terry already knows Trev's training secrets, and she's not worried. Oh, the bag. I love the bag. As long as you say no to this little hole here, I think that's your main objective, isn't it? <laughs> it's not the plastic bag around your belly. <laughs> it's that one. <laughs> Just quietly, with the race a week out, Terry might just have an edge. Lay down. Good boy. There he is. That's a good horse and a good trainer. Hey. Someone else is putting in the hard yards on a hot morning. Trev's been off the beer and sweating it out for his racing comeback tomorrow. Oh, well, that's it. Been a long three months. Day every day, seven days a week. Just hope tomorrow, when the big race is on, I can run a place, and if I do, I'll have achieved something. it would be really good. But first, the biggest loser moment. Trev used to be 90 kilos. Ha, great, fantastic. <laughs> that's it. 74. I think I've done well, yeah. Especially for my age, too. It's, uh, quite chuffed with myself, actually. Good on you, Trev. The 60-year-old's dropped 16 kilos in 12 weeks. I've got a clipping here from when I used to ride. <laughs> I came off. Look at me, lying there like a bag of shit. And it just ran straight over the top of me. 
That was 25 years ago. But if he thinks his competition tomorrow will go easy on him, he's got another thing coming. I'm going to whip Trevor's butt. <laughs> Milton's sister Terry and her horse are peaking at the right time. I have to say, yes, she's going to win. He's just going to see my sweet ass <laughs> butt. Sorry. <laughs> Big up, big up, big up. Today is race day. The showdown between Milton's cook <laughs> and Milton's sister. Christina! Yeah. Terry's arrived to drum up support from the Joneses. Can I get a drink, please? Yeah, sure. Not too much brotherly love here. And Milton's not saying much about which horse he's going to back. Oh, well, that's always happened. You get a pom and a sister together, you're going to have trouble. <laughs> I told them both this morning as they were having a big fight over who was going to win. I said, you'll probably both get flogged. Better not forget this. I'm ready for the race. I'm going to get there and try and win. <laughs> oh, you got this! <laughs> oh, you got this! Day we've been waiting for, Big Trev's race day. The weight of the world's on his shoulders. There are eight races, but only one that counts. The unofficial Cooley Bar Cup. Trev and I are going head to head as of 2.30, 2.15. That's it. It's, it's the battle. Terry <laughs> doesn't have a lot of experience, so she decides to play mind games with former jockey Trev. Trevor! Roger, Roger, come on, how are you feeling? Have a good look. Yeah, having a good look. Because that's the last time you're going to see that. The next one's just going to be that. <laughs> good luck, Trev. Good luck. You bloody need it. <laughs> I'm going to try and do everything I can to sabotage him. Trev better just watch his little tushy. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, guys. Trev's good to go, and he's getting his riding instructions from the boss. Just pretend it's someone there with dirty boots in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Although the is going to jump up on top of me then. <laughs> OK, girls, I'm going to go off like a frog in a sock. All right, All right. Yeah. it's business now. No, I'm, I'm not nervous. I've got to risk it to get the biscuit. <laughs> the Cooley Bar showdown's creating quite a stir. This number six. 25 each way and then 200 on the nose. In the jockey's room, you can feel attention. I'll be riding to win, and so will Trevor, but I think with Trevor, he's very serious. I hope that he does good, you know, he's put in the hours and the training, and I guess it's the moment of truth. Race time, and Terry's hoping pink and purple will be a winning combo. Trevor hopes his gold star cap will bring him good luck. Come on, let's go and watch it. We'll probably throw him first up. <laughs> we'll be cooking for ourselves. 900 metres, a flying start, and the winner gets bragging rights for a year. Look, they're starting. <laughs> What's happening? Terry in the pink and purple is in third, well ahead of gold star Trev. You're joking. You're too far back, look. Terry is hard on the rails. It looks like she's got Trev covered. Hang on. Trev is charging down the final straight. He's right. Here they come. Is it going? Yeah. <laughs> Terry on the fence is in real strike. But Trev spots a gap. It's Trev's day. Did Trev win? He got second. Yeah, he did really well. Hey, that's really the go. Well. We run second. Yeah, well, that'll do, eh? <laughs> that was really, really good. Oh, yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> and Terry has still done her girls proud. I think she came third from the other end. 
good on your trip. Well done. Oh, that was great. <laughs> really good. I thought to come up behind me there. <laughs> Yeah, I've just seen Trev now, he's happy. If yeah. didn't win it, I would never hear the end of it. Number two. The school holidays are nearing an end for the Jones kids. Well, let's go, big guy. Today, the biggest kid of them all is taking Bo and little Milton... Not a hopping cowboy. ...on a special assignment. Put your seatbelt on. Do you need chewies, babe? Yeah, in the cupboard. But both of them need a headset all day. Don't they? How come? Because they like loud noises. Clear prop. The boys are going fishing. The Jones is right. It's one of the best fishing spots in the Territory. It's bloody good fishing. And this year is probably one of the better years, I reckon. With your kids, it's great fun taking them fishing and whatever you do, you know what I mean? Say outdoor stuff, it's a great time of the year to be doing it. Everyone has a bit of fun, eh? When it comes to fishing, you've got to listen to Dad because he knows his stuff. Now you got your boots wet, have a cast over there, look, walk over there a bit. Just in that bit of backwater there, you'll get one there straight away. You might get a crocodile there too. With the river still running fast, it's the best time to hook a barrel. There now! And to make things interesting, Milton is putting up some of his hard-earned cash for the great Coolie Bar Fishing Challenge. Oh, well, we just have a bit of a competition each year here who catches the biggest fish. 100 bucks, say, for the first prize, that's all. Then they usually got to shout it back in beer, so... <laughs> open to family, workers and friends. And the race is on. Oh, well, I've got my lure. It's my favourite lure. I've got a lot of fish with this lure. And he'll only get the big ones. So any little ones sort of don't know not to come near him. Underneath that log, that's the spot. Most definitely there'd be lots of cheating. I would say Milton would go down there 10 times and allow everyone else to go down there too. We kind of had one last year and I caught the biggest fish so nobody said anything about the winner. I don't think they wanted a girl to win. <laughs> he seems to think he's going to win it every year, but good news for him, eh? I'll cheat if I have to. <laughs> Milton always catches the biggest fish, whether it's that big or that big. It's always the biggest. I don't think I'll catch anything. don't really like fishing, but... Fish off! Blew him again! Pretty good here. I think I could settle in for a while. Back at the homestead, a couple of grey nomads are just rolling in. Big fishing competition on here, and I'm the fellow here to knock it off. Wayne and his wife Janine are old family friends of the Joneses. Yeah, I've known Milton for a fair while. Since he was a big kid, he used to hang around with his hat pulled down over his ears, and didn't say too much, but he done a lot of listening. That's why the man got on. After travelling 7,000 kilometres, they're stopping by to make some easy money. You had a rod before you left, and the first place you went to, you had to buy another one. You've got to have one. a special barrel rod to catch right barrel. Know. OK. Just make sure you catch it, and you win this competition, because we could do with a bit of money. Every no, little bit it's... helps. <laughs> <laughs> getting money out of Milton would be like getting it out of a stone. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I've never caught a barrel before, so I've got to have a bit of practice on these locals. The first rule of fishing, hang on to your rod. <laughs> Lee, we haven't got him yet, but we will. Wayne better get his act together, because the fish are biting. Yeah. That's a good fish, don't you? Beauty. What you got? Just a black rim. Chuck a back down. Yeah. A bit little. You know, it's going pretty good, but I haven't really started yet. Going to ease everyone into it, and then... Just bring it home. <laughs> we can, Paul. Yes. That's the first barra. Wow. Wow. We're not there. We'll get another one in a minute. Even the cook's getting some action. Good up here, you bastard. Ah, he snuck it. Still there. We're keeping him. The beauty. <laughs> I'll knock it off. I'll win it. 
Looks like Wayne's weighing in with a monster. I think he'll knock it off, this fella. I really do. He's a good barrow. And Milton hasn't even caught a cold. Yeah, Queensland is coming up here beating us. Hey, Steve. <laughs> you won't be able to lift ah, that big bigger on. on there, What's it, Wayne? It is a good fish, isn't it, eh? Eight kilo. <laughs> you bastard, you got that in his mouth. I knew he wasn't that heavy. Look at the cheating bastard. Look at him. Oh. <laughs> he nearly got away with that too. He nearly got away with it. Well, come on, you got to fill up the bastard now for cheating. That's it. Jesus, he is a good fish, isn't he, eh? And rat cunning to beat the boss. Oh, I've just got a little spot. It's a fair ways from here. The water's crystal clear and there's a big waterfall drops into it and you can sneak one helicopter down in there and catch whatever fish you want. Milton's chief pilot, Stephen Groves, is heading to his favourite spot to bring home the barra. Can you show Mr Jones a trick or two? Here we go. First cast, first fish. Well, he's only a small one, mate. There's some bigger bars, isn't there? Second cast. And then, well, it just gets silly. Oh, he's all right, he's not, he's not a monster. In just shy of 20 minutes, Groves pulls in six healthy specimens. It's not easy being this good. It was so long. But Groves' pain has hooked in the big one. I reckon he might have won the comp, this one. If he didn't, he'll be close to it. Yep. Just across the water, Janine's getting a little tired of watching Wayne fish all day. I know I know nothing, but I mean, I can always have my say, hey, what about that one? Try anything once. Yeah. Suddenly, she's got a real reason to pack it in. There's a taipan snake up here. Taipan! Black one, yellow belly. The taipan is only the second most venomous snake in the world. But this is a really good fishing spot. I think the fish can wait. Wayne's got himself a dilemma. Where's Wayne? Is he coming? It's a taipan? Well, I know they're not good. Look, see him going up there, Wayne? Doesn't look like a tree snake to me. He's too long and skinny. Yeah, well, that's where a little carpet or something. Little python. Who wouldn't know? We've got hey. a photo of it and we'll see what it is. Yeah, but if you keep away from them, they'll leave you alone. I'm, I'm certainly not going to go and pat him, that's for sure. Okay. Rock python, you reckon? We'll see what it says. We'll look up my snake. What do you? We'll go back and get the snake. <laughs> Your beer will be good tonight, Wayne. Yeah, a little rum in front of it. <laughs> Yeah, he just knocked over you. Jesus, that's made him heavy. Milton and Bo have finally had a catch. Not that big, but I think he'll win the comp. Go on. How big? What's that? Seven kilo. That's the heaviest one. Yeah, that's what it's good to. No. Are you holding that weight? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> three kilos, is it? No, it's three, yeah, three kilos. Butchers, butchers pull. <laughs> three kilos? That's a baby compared to the competition. It's time to up the ante. I see a big bull shark there, about probably about two metre, just in a set of rapids. The bull sharks get in there and clean all the barra up, so what I do is get a buoy and a, a float and a big hook and a bit of fresh beef and... Be careful now when you're putting it out, make sure you don't get your hook around it. Drop it in there and the bull sharks usually grab it straight away. Right, I lower in there now. And then you pull the bull shark out. Sit and wait now. And that's class as a fish. <laughs> when that shark hits it, it'll just go boof and take it away and then we'll jump in the chopper and get the gaff and hook it up. If he's in there, we'll get him. That shark isn't biting. You're on channel, Milton. But while they wait, a call for help. You're on channel, Milton. Back at the homestead, 
Christina's facing a medical emergency. He's got um, chest pains and that sort of thing and his heart's racing. Suddenly, there's a light in the balance. We need to get him to the nearest medical centre. Christina's urgently trying oh, to get right medical well, help. <coughs> we may as well drive him straight to Catherine then. If, he can't, if we can't see the doctor there, and if they can't get a plane, there's not much point going there. It's not a matter of being easy, it's just a matter of making sure that he doesn't have a heart attack, not a heart attack and die. Milton races back to the news that his old mate Wayne is suffering severe chest pains. I'm trying to get a plane to Timber Creek. He's going to ring me back. It's pretty serious. Yeah, they think he might be having another heart attack. He's had four bypass, eight bypasses in total. I better go and see that old cowboy. He might roll over. It's too dangerous to chopper him to hospital. So Christina's called for an air ambulance. If we've got to get the flying doctor in, they won't land here on this airstrip because it's not bloody registered. We'll have to get him to Timber Creek and fly him out of there. You've got to change your clothes. Grab a few clothes because you'll end up in Darwin. Come on, when let's not go down the road. No, oh, no. Be careful. Drive safely, not too fast. You're right now? No, no. I've got men in Darwin. If we need any vehicle up there, everything's right. OK, just tell me and I'll have someone there. No, no. The closest place an air ambulance can land is 90 kilometres away at Timber Creek. The fear for Christina is that Wayne could go into cardiac arrest. When something goes wrong medically, you've sort of got to act on it pretty much straight away. Time is of the essence, isn't it? The flight to Darwin will take an hour. It's a harsh reminder of just how remote the Joneses are. Got such a history, bad history, and we're so far from anywhere, it's you can't be too careful. Don't want anything to happen to him. Poor old fella. It's been two weeks since the teenagers went back to school. Now there are some other visitors making a welcome return. <laughs> this old bastard survived, eh? You made it, bros. Beat all elements again, eh? Eh? You beat all elements again. No trouble. No trouble. <laughs> oh, that's good. I thought you might have died. No. No. Eh? Can't kill a good man, eh? No, no, no. <laughs> well, come on, let's have a beer. Sounds good to me, you mate. You feeling all right? Yep. Good oh, that's a go. Wayne's Come not on. long out of intensive care in the Darwin Hospital, <laughs> but he and Janine weren't going to pass up a chance to swing by. Hey, George, you go. good luck to you. Thanks for looking after us. You're yeah, not too good. I just got too excited. Bit of heat. It's all part of growing up. It's all part of growing up. Um, the Joneses, they have been great. You know what friends are when you've got people like that around. Yeah. And there is one other piece of unfinished business. <laughs> Milton's fishing competition. Hey, Miss, you're going to present this bloody hey, fishing competition or what? Gather around, gather around, everyone. No, well, I think Wayne's the winner. Congratulations. There's your prizes. Racing plate. The I'm, boss I'm has come good on the cash. <laughs> That's your bloody <laughs> money. Plus, oh, a pair of silver horseshoes. Uh, no, you're joking. I've been rolled. <laughs> <laughs> protest, protest. Put your shoulders back and cowboy up a bit. <laughs> humble little Queenslander coming up here. Never caught a bear in my life. And, and to win a competition like this, I thought it was unreal. <laughs> I like you got all them hotshot pilots and that. Taking us out fishing. <laughs> Couldn't catch a bloody thing. Look on the bright side, see if you got second place. <laughs> Old saying, if you're not first, you're last. Good on you. <laughs> and this week's wildest number one. It's back to work for Milton. He's going to check on his grazing paddocks. I've got about 3,000 wieners to go there, and I've got a fresh feed there, you know. 
for the King of Coolibar, it's just another day. It's good going, eh? Pays the wages. Love it, mate, love it. <laughs> but Coolibar's about to remind Milton how unpredictable she can be. Oh, we got a bit of a fire there up on top. Drop a match out of the motor car. And that wing's flared it up and we got a big fire right where I'm going to put all my wieners. The feed for over 3,000 head of cattle is in the path of the fire. If the paddocks are lost, well, it doesn't bear thinking about. I don't know. There's a lot of grass here. You know, it keeps coming up the top of these hills here. Look at the whole place here. Facing disaster, Milton phones home. Christina, the all that's on fire, a whole lot. The whole lot's going. Christina. But Mrs. Jones has a handful. With no answer, Milton's got to get help from somewhere else. Last today, right there. You know, it's the last place I wanted to be, right? There's my fourth day in a row. Oh well. Getting good at it, I guess. Or better. Unaware of Milton's troubles, rookie Jeff's mundane day is still crawling along. There's a lot of fences on this joint. I'm glad Alfie's here with me, I'd like to be lost. But his morning's about to get real shaken up. The turtle lagoon's on fire, a whole lot. You might get my turtle, she can throw that water cart on, eh? Just fill it up, we're not going to be able to get near it yet. When fire breaks out at Coolibar, the workers become the firemen. He's not exactly like being called Triple O and just ask him to come round. We're just going to get into it now and we'll have a look. Right now, the fire's too intense to get close to. Still, Milton has to do something. See if we can at least put it out or put a fire break with a grader. Straight down the line. See that patch in the middle? Yeah. It's cleared either side. Let's just go straight up there. Milton's making a fire break. An area free of trees and grass on the edge of the paddock. It should stop the flames from spreading, but like anything at Coolibar, there's no guarantees. This country, one minute it's bloody raining, the next minute it's underwater and then it's burning. There's always something going on in there, eh? Trying to make a quid, fighting the elements. Still losing her, she's still going. Wildfire has broken out at Coolibar and it's moving towards the station's feeding paddocks. Christina, all the turtle lagoons on fire, a whole lot. Right there with them steers, oh, we're going to put them wieners, look, a whole lot's going. Looks like a bit of a grass fire is happening. It's a bit scary. Well, the worst that could happen is all the feeds destroyed, I guess. Although Milton's built a fire break to protect the valuable land, he knows it won't be enough. I'll have to get at it tonight with a water cart. We won't get near it now. It's bloody 20 foot flames, you know what I mean? Oh, just, you know, the best little paddock we got there too, right on the bitumen. I've been saving it full of feed, you know, for my wieners, and it should be gone in about three hours, I reckon. The cooler weather in the evening will make it easier to get at the fire on the ground. But when it comes time to go out, once again, one guy's getting left behind. Very frustrated. I'd love to try and help him pitch in. But I don't know what to do. How big is it? Oh, it's buddy nearly at that the what's the fence on the western side there, eh? And it's stretching nearly right down to the river. You know, there's that old turkey nest there. Before going to tackle the fire, Milton sent a spotter to report on the blaze. Is it at the turkey nest yet? 
Nah, uh, but it's only a few hundred metres away now, but I think that it's been graded there. Hopefully it'll pull up. It looks like it will. It'll probably pull up there at that fence, I reckon. We lost one, Sally. There's another three that go really easy. Right, it's going to keep going. Oh, you reckon or what? Oh, I shouldn't go any further to the west. If the wind swings around, it might go back towards Fitzroy. With the fire still out of control, Milton decides to take a man and the water cart to fight the blaze. We want to get out there and try and salvage what we can before they all go. but not everyone wants him to. Milton's very good at what he does, but there's always an element of concern because the fires can come out of nowhere and you don't want to get stuck. Where's Milton? He's going into the chapter. With a seat going next to the boss, Jeff sees his chance. Just got told that Milton was going to go out there and fight a bushfire that had just broken out out in one of the fields. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So just asked if he needed a hand, and he did. All good, Brad? All good. Come on, let's go. But Jeff has no idea what he's in for. Fire out. It's one big fire. Look out for snake. Come down the front of that fire. <coughs> smell that mongrel smell there? Yeah. The plastic burn, and that's our pipeline. Have you ever fought a bushfire before? Never. And you're about to learn. The plan is to circle the blaze, spraying the edges to stop it from spreading. I'll go forward a bit. Want me to get it? Yeah, I'll be. Trying to get a few of these little spot fires out around here. Once it burns, it's even finished for a couple of years, you know. It might come back. Put a bit finer spray. If they can get on top of it, the fire should burn itself out. That's it. <coughs> you right up there? <coughs> yeah, you got all the smoke and just crap at your eyes, and you're still trying to get as close as you can without getting burned or anything like that. Get it in there, look. See there? Keep your line going all the way. I didn't care how tired I was. I wasn't going to go to bed without demolishing some of it. Keep your hose out wide, that's it. With just water and willpower, the boys are starting to bring the edge of the fire under control. You're got him, Jeff. But one thing's running out. A bit more water. It's out. Oh, shit. Bit more water. While fighting the wildfire. It's out. Oh, shit. Milton and Jeff's water has dried up. Oh, no, can't fill it up, mate. Jump in the front and let's go. If the boys go back to the station, the fire will flare up. But Milton knows somewhere else they can get a refill. Though the cattle shouldn't mind Milton taking their water, Every minute spent refilling allows the fire to spread. Here it comes. That's it. Let's go. Now it's Milton and Jeff versus the fire. Round two. Fine spray all the way along the line. More water. Get it in there, look. Spray it like hell, like this. It's pretty crazy. Oh, jump in there, Jeff. Where you go? Go. You get that feeling of self-achievement. There's a fire, and then suddenly there's not. You know, that was one of the best feelings of the world. Get here, too. Got a lot of energy, eh? Hey? Got himself together pretty well. Want me to jump over? No, you're right. Yeah, no, he looks all right, eh? Hey? Jump back in. Quickly now. 
Yeah, I think you're doing a good job, eh? Make a man out of it. Anything coming up behind it? You all got him. Bush fire man. Milton's happy they've sprayed enough water to bring the fire under control. Now it's home time. Come and get it! And maybe breakfast. Right, oh, that's it for the day. What a tea. <laughs> Definitely. I am rest and don't. Yeah, big day. As Jeff hits the sack. You might look more beautiful if you had some more beauty sleep, I reckon. The rest of Cooley Barra just getting up. And you'd be forgiven for thinking there wasn't a giant fire last night. Oh, that's supposed to be D. Ready to kick her up? Yep. Yeehaw! I'm a cowboy, do you know? Yeah, well. Milton knows all too well just how close it came. And he's checking the damage. I know there'd be probably 20 square K here gone, I suppose. But at least the fire's out. So Milton can count this one as a win. Sort of. That's the territory for you. One minute you got the lot, the next minute you got nothing. Floods, fire. You got the whole lot up here. What do you do? You just get on with it, eh? Get another paddock. Let's go. What are your favourite moments with the Joneses? Let us know in the comments below.